Uh, my name is Bernice Elliott, and uh, I was born in Alderston, 1927. I'm now 85 and living in Burnley. Uh, I've lived here 50 years now. Well, as children, we were made to appreciate things and at an early age we used to go fishing, well netting really. My father bought a net, had strict instructions from my mother that it had to have a fine mesh in the middle so that it would, we could catch garfish. So that's how, how it all started. Going netting as a family and catching a fish, mainly at night. And I can't remember, but I think we used to have to, there weren't the weather reports that you get now. We used to uh, go by a little piece in the paper as to when the tides were, and we'd go when the tides were right. And I think it must have been when the tide was going out. I'm just not sure on that. Of course, I was too young then to, to realise the, the importance of the tide. But we'd go netting, especially after tea of the night, we'd go, and of course there were no wetsuits or anything like that in those days. And we'd have our swimmers on and a thick jumper to try and keep them. But to make sure we had what was called a cradle for the net to go on. We didn't have a boat, we had to wade into the water and make an ark. I always make sure that the tallest person was on the outside of the of the ark and that the lead then would drop down the lead would be on one side of the net and the cork were floats on the other. So top side had the, or the tallest one, had the, uh, the outside and would make a big arc and as we came in with the net we used to have to keep our foot on the bottom rope to keep it down on the, on the floor of the the beach with the sand and then pull it up so that no fish would get out of the, the ark. But that's the first I can remember of, the, of fishing there. And we used to get quite big haul sometimes. Of course sometimes we'd get nothing, we'd get seaweed. But then, yeah, we had a good time and plenty of variety in the fish that we caught too. We caught mullet, uh, what we used to call cocky salmon, flounder, garfish, uh, but we did at times catch, um, oh, you know, stingray. We used to really shy away from them and the odd shark or two we'd catch that uh, we'd catch the uh, flathead uh, so there'd be a real variety we'd go home with and we just had a, a, a sugar bag to put the fish in no plastic in those days no plastic nothing so we just had a, char a, a sugar bag and uh, we, we keep keep our fish on the beach. Mind you, we had when we were out at Picnic Point at Alveston catching fish. There were often campers come down because they wanted free feed, so they, they always got free feed. So that was good too.
and I, I first time I went at him, I would have been four or seven, I reckon. Uh, it, we needed two people on the cradle that was to carry them about. Needed two people there, one each end of the cradle. We needed two each end on the ropes, uh, pulling them in. And then we needed really another person to go down and pull a cradle off the beach when they had finished taking the net off and pulling in. So altogether, we needed two, four, six, seven. Uh, very, we all had to be pretty strong and able to, uh, to do that. But uh, we used to, I suppose, off and on, during the war, of course, we didn't go out very much because we didn't weren't enough, enough people around at the same time to do it. But I've seen the time when we pulled in so many fish that uh, we used to, after we went home with the fish moment, well, we used to arrange so that one would be washing the fish, one would be um, scaling them, and want to be cleaning them, and perhaps someone else filleting them. And I can remember we had so many fish one time that Mum had supplied both hospitals in Alberston with fish for their brekkie the next day. She's very generous in those respects. She we often sent, we had a cow. Um, and Mum used to send down milk and cream and things like that, or veggies, to the hospital if she went, if she could. Um, yeah. And when we came home from fishing, that we'd often had sit down and have fish for supper. Yeah. So that was good. Yeah. Well, it depends how many were around the the house and you wanting to go and we often used to go and take visitors, you know, it was a big thing to go netting and catch the fish that way. There weren't a lot of people that, that understood or uh, would go netting. If you would, you know, you'd see them on the wharf and down on the break wall fishing with the rod and reel, but not, uh, not netting. But we, as I said, it used to take seven uh, you'd need to go and then you had to have somebody drive the vehicle to take it down. And so it wasn't always available. So it was a big thing for us, you know, to go fishing and that. But over the years, of course, we would have started and started when I was about seven, as I said and then went on till about, about I, would, I would say about 18 is the last time I went fishing and we went netting over at Picnic Point and we were in having a swim and then all of a sudden there were two big schools of fish and we were swimming amongst these fish but the net was up on the beach so that wasn't much good. But, and I've known the time when we've had so many fish in the net that we've had to, we couldn't pull it in, it was too heavy. We've had to empty some of the fish out of the net before we could pull it up on the beach. We used to have to pull the net right up on the beach and then uh, make sure that the fish weren't going back into the water, that the, it was clear of the water at the edge so that we could collect the fish and, and uh, yeah, put them in the bag or, or the young children used to love coming down and having a look at the smaller kidneys or the little fish. They used to love getting those. But mainly they just went back in the sea. So, yeah. 
Fishing's different now because most of the mostly nowadays they want a boat to go out into the deeper water, not offshore. They want to go out and have a motorised boat or a power boat and uh, yes, go out and and do their fishing that way these days. That's what I find. You don't see that many people fishing along the the rivers and that like they used to. Or maybe they go deeper further back. Uh, whereas one time they didn't go back in the in the country because the, the transport was different. It was a push bike and you were lucky to have a push bike. So it was Shanks Pony, like we used to say, or Ford. So it's, it's all different. It's a matter of, um, yes, what's, what's convenient, I suppose. Well, I often think that because we're using so many different types of uh, uh, manufactured poisons and, and, and weed kills and, and all those things which are draining into the ocean. I think that, I don't think it'll ever be back to what it was because everything's changing all the time and the shoreline's changing. Whereas one time uh, there were little villages, now there are towns. So everything's different. You can't turn back the hands of time. So I think that, you know, we're stuck with it. And I don't know how it's going to be, be made any different. I don't know what can be done. Um, there was a gentleman, he was really an elderly man. Um, he was an old fisherman. He lived at Olveston, there was no Olveston, and he had up the uh, western side of the Lever River, uh, he had a hut made out of uh, fern trees, um, and it was always, I can remember my dad taking me up there. And he used to breed, breed salmon. And he had a hatchery. That's what the right name I put. He had a hatchery there in this. And it was always cold because it was always wet. Everything was moist all the time round. And it was like a... You I can remember going in and I had my good shoes on and I got into trouble because I had good shoes on. I didn't know where, where we were going. And uh, it was water running through all the time and, and green moss and that. And he bred salmon up there and that was way back, would have been uh, way back in the early 30s. That was there. But I haven't been up there for... Um, many a many there, and he was quite an elderly fellow. But I remember that he used to breed the chickens up there. He leads them to the sea. I think he just used to, you know, and perhaps he, he because uh, the trout and, and that used to be quite prevalent up the the Leven River. And gun planes and that down there. But of course, he had, a, uh, I think it was, uh, he had an uh, inboard motor, of course, they were all inboard motors in those days, but he had a, like a long, to me, it was always like a, a, a bit of a whaler, the, the, the boat he had. Because I can remember us going out in it. Dad arranged for us to go out in it one Saturday afternoon. And we got on near the wharf at Alveston. We got out to the break wall and 
four days or I couldn't make out why he was putting out. And one of the uh, brothers, her oldest brother, and the next dad, my sister, was about four years older than me. They got seasick, so he <laughs> let them go home. <laughs> so they went back home. But it held quite a few in, in the boat, you know. Uh, yes, it was quite a big boat. fishing trips and that sometimes up the river. The, the, up the Lever River was quite popular as I think it still is as a fishing lake. Yeah. Fish supper and, and uh, everything like that. My mother even used to bottle fish. So preserve fish, you know. Uh, we didn't waste it in those days. Nothing was wasted. Well, look, in Alveston, we had one fish shop. Um, if you wanted to feed, you didn't go, well, you couldn't afford to, when, as a kid, we never had fish and chips from the shop. If we didn't go and catch the fish, we didn't have fish, we didn't, we didn't go, I had I can't remember the first time I went out for a bought meal. We never went out for a meal. We never went out. We were lucky if we had an ice cream. Uh, 